Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. First of all, thanks a lot to all the new subscribers that we have here on our channel. You guys are like my family and I just wanted to tell you that it really means a lot to me. And having said that, I'm really sorry for the delay in posting the new videos on AWS. Because this is a pretty special one that we have here. And yes, we are going to talk about Amazon Simple Storage Service that is S3. And it's a very lengthy topic and has a lot of information that we need to cover. So we will be dividing this as well into multiple parts so that we can cover different topics independently and it will be a very easy thing for us to do because it will be very easy for you guys to absorb as well. So please forgive me for this time I'll try to increase the pace from now on but the main thing is that we should bring quality and our channel is new so please don't be mad at me I know you won't be. So the good thing is we have completed our first phase that's the phase one and congratulations everyone and we are into our phase two and it means we have completed most of the topics that we have and the next big section will be vpc but don't worry we will be covering that as well and we are going to finish up amazon s3 or aws s3 in this multi-part section so sit back relax and let's get started with amazon s3 So Amazon Simple Storage Service or Amazon S3 is an object storage service that offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security and performance. So I would like to call this as a data store of object type of data and in a way it's a type of database but for objects. So AWS S3 is basically an object storage built to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. So anywhere here means that it can be retrieved by anyone from any part of the world who has sufficient permissions to do that. And there are three important things that you should understand if you really want to master the craft of AWS S3. The first one is AWS S3 objects. The second one that we have here is S3 buckets. And the third one is S3 bucket with objects. Okay, so let's get started with the first one. So we have S3 objects. So Amazon S3 is a simple key value store are designed to store as many objects as you want. So what it means here is that all the objects that you store will have a key which will point to a data that you want to retrieve. So with the simple key value pair as you already know that there can't be duplicate keys and there should be a unique key pointing to a specific value and that's no different in S3 as well. So you have a unique key that will point to an S3 object and uh, Amazon S3 is abbreviated for Amazon Simple Storage Service. So it's basically a web service that lets you store and retrieve data within an object store via an API reachable over HTTPS and objects on S3 can be like image files or simple files, Excel sheets or log files or video files and each object that you have here on uh, S3 can be up to 5 terabytes in size. So remember that S3 objects are object type data like images, audio files, video files and in general files and not strings like we do in typical databases. Okay, so the second one that we have here is S3 bucket. So an Amazon S3 bucket is a public cloud storage resource available in Amazon Web Services. So you might ask why do we call this a bucket? It's simply as the name suggests, it is used for storage. So the third one that you have here is S3 bucket with objects. So as just now I mentioned that a bucket is used to for storage and if you have a bucket you want to store something right. So yes here in S3 we store objects within our S3 bucket. Oh that was a big secret isn't it. <laughs> so if you recall using computers uh, you create directories or folders in your drives right and you store files isn't it. So storing objects is similar in S3 as well but the biggest difference here is that you don't have a folder structure like the nested ones you have where you can create folders within folders and store files. The concept, that type of concept is not present in S3. But yes, you can store files within the S3 bucket and as the max limit for objects on S3 is up to five terabytes, there is no limit on the number of objects that you can store. It gives you unlimited storage, but for the restrictions of storing is like up to five terabytes per object. Okay, so you can manage your requirements accordingly. So now let's discuss what does the S3 object structure looks like. So the S3 object you see here, you need to remember every object has its own unique global key, which you refer to access the object data. So let's see the metadata information that we have here. So the metadata and the data allows you uh, or the user to work with the metadata for managing and querying data. So access control is a basic security measure to determine who has access to the object and metadata 
and it helps to control this information as well so you have a basic file types images or videos or you even have tags for object tagging size of the object is also mentioned and its creation date and in data if you see we have various file types that are supported like html css image files and video files json executables and blobs so global key is basically the path to the object it looks similar to a url because that's what it is and this is an example so just remember this for now and then you can store that uh, object into the bucket okay so as also we can see here like we have aws slash python slash wall dot jpg so let's suppose this is an object and it has all the metadata information along with it and the data which is an image file and that is what we are going to store it in the s3 bucket okay so i hope that was clear this is a very simple concept you have a global unique key that points to an object okay so let's suppose you have this key and it'll have a corresponding value right so you have the object as its value and when you want to point to that particular object you're going to use the key that's a globally unique key okay so i hope that was simple enough let's move on so before moving forward let's take a use case for s3 so this is the real time example because i have worked on these architectures and this is a pretty basic scenario by the way so you have to create a web application and which basically generates logs report and that will be used for analysis and reporting later on and it is advised that please don't lose the logs and as your company is cheap so they ask you to design it right now with a minimalistic design so the way you design is you have a simple application hosted on aws uh, vpc and that application resides in your ec2 instance so which will generate logs for your analysis and processing then what you want is to have auto scaling as well so you hook up a scaling policy with it which basically gets triggered with the cloudwatch alarm and these will be accomplished by using the aws athena so you can query the logs and your logs will be stored in s3 and they will be retained there so here the whole purpose is to store the objects here in the form of logs so now as you can see here that i have mentioned in the visualization as well we have the web service that has been hosted in the vpc and then we have the cloudwatch alarm that triggers the auto scaling groups and we store the logs that we generate in s3 bucket and use the logs by using aws athena so that we can query them and basically we can process the logs so that we can get the reporting structure that we want okay so now that you have a fair understanding of what we are talking about let's move on so let's get into some deep dive for s3 objects so AWS S3 is a web service that lets you store and retrieve data in an object store via an API reachable over HTTPS. I have already told you this. So it means what you see when you have an object as a key, which is basically URL that can be accessed over the HTTPS protocol. So you can store any kind of data such as images, documents, binaries, as long as the size of the single object does not exceed five terabytes. Okay. And the object contains the following. So you have the key here. The key is the name that you assign to an object and you use the object key to retrieve the object. This is pretty simple. The version ID that you have. So within a bucket, a key and a version ID uniquely identifies a object, which means is that there can be multiple versions of the object and the version ID and the key can help you find the exact file that you want. Don't worry about this. We will be discussing versioning in some time. And the next thing that we have here is a value. It is the content that you are storing in the object so the metadata is basically a name value pair with which you can store information regarding the object which we already discussed and sub resources sub resources is also very important because uh, so amazon s3 uses the uh, sub resource mechanisms to store object specific additional information so they are always associated with some other entity such as an object or a bucket okay let me tell you that there are two types of it so one of it is basically acl and the other one is torrent okay when you create an object the ACL identifies the object owner as having full control over the object. And on the other hand, AWS S3 uses the torrent sub resource to return the torrent file associated with the specific object. To retrieve a torrent file, you specify the torrent sub resource in your get request. Okay. And the next thing is access control information. You can control access to the object that you store in Amazon S3. And the next thing is object key. As we know, it is a unique key that identifies the object in the bucket. So as you don't have folders within the bucket, you can create a structure of buckets like the department or name that matches your requirement like we have here. So it can be like department slash welcome dot HTML or finance slash HR slash salary slash accounts dot PDF. Okay, in similar ways. So S3 object tagging, 
uh, that we have here is like you, we use object tagging to categorize storage so you have some uh, objects that are associated to game that you can categorize like category equal to game and let's suppose you have some files that are related to shopping so that you can categorize them to project so this is pretty simple i hope you got the gist of what we are discussing here so let's move on okay let's deep dive into s3 buckets so to upload your data like photos or videos or documents etc to amazon s3 you must first create an s3 bucket in one of your aws regions okay so s3 provides apis for you to manage your buckets and amazon s3 bucket name is globally unique and the namespace is shared by all the aws accounts and you cannot create a bucket with a name that has already been used and s3 is a global service you should remember that and if you want to create a bucket that should be unique globally so nowhere in the world someone would have created a name then you cannot use that name okay so you must have a unique name associated to the bucket and a bucket is owned by the aws account that created it and the bucket ownership is not transferable so when you create a bucket you choose the region to create the bucket in and after you created the bucket you cannot change its region okay so remember that once you've created the bucket you cannot change the region okay so by default you can create up to 100 buckets in each of your aws accounts up to 1000 by submitting a request to aws and reusing bucket names so how do we reuse bucket names so you can delete a bucket only if it is empty and after a bucket is deleted the name becomes available for reuse however after you delete the bucket you might not be able to use that because there might be some time when you delete the bucket the name becomes available for reuse so within that time if someone else might create the bucket with the same name then you will not be able to access it or you will not be able to use it anymore so aws recommends that you should not delete the bucket and remember that there is no limit of number of objects that you can store in a bucket i know this is a bit boring but if you want to really get the deep inside of buckets these points are really important okay so the first point that we have here is bucket names must be unique across all existing bucket names in the amazon s3 i hope this was clear enough that we already discussed and bucket names must comply with dns naming conventions like we name for our subdomain names and bucket names must not contain uppercase characters or underscores and bucket names must start with a lowercase letter or number okay and bucket names must be a series of one or more labels adjacent labels are separated by a single period and bucket names can contain lowercase characters or numbers or letters and hyphens each label must start and end with a lowercase or a number okay so bucket names cannot be formatted as an ip address you cannot have a name like an ip address that we have mentioned here so i hope this was interesting enough so let's move on thanks for watching the part one we will continue with object versioning in the next part so please make sure you watch it and if you liked it hit the like button put a comment and subscribe to the channel thanks again